All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody, and as always, thank you for tuning in. We got some news about some top 30 visits that will be at Hallis Hall this week to meet with the Chicago Bears. These guys range from all over the board, whether it's a first-round prospect or a fifth-round prospect. Poles is doing his homework with the rest of the squad, and I think that this is a good group to start things off for the Chicago Bears. Thank you for everyone for tuning in. If you haven't already, please hit the like button on this video and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all Chicago Bears news, content, and highlights. And I am really grateful for all you guys tuning in, excited to go over this squad of today of the top 30 visits that the Chicago Bears have already have on their calendar. So... Obviously, the big one to start things off, quarterback Caleb Williams from USC will be at Hallis Hall later this week to meet with the Chicago Bears. Uh, you know, we are at his pro day last week. Literally everyone that was there from the front office to the coaching staff, minus Kevin Warren, obviously. But the quarterback who's projected to go number one overall, it seems like the Bears are going in that direction with Caleb Williams. 6'1", 215 pounds, has a 90.3 overall PFF grade. You know, this past year for the Trojans, he played in 12 games with over 3,600 passing yards, 30 passing touchdowns, five interceptions, and a 118 passer rating. Overall, we kind of already know that this is the guy for the Chicago Bears. He, I, I know I did that trade back earlier with potentially getting Justin Herbert, which I wouldn't mind either, but Cleo, Caleb Williams looks like the guy moving forward for the Chicago Bears, which I am super pumped about. Also, thank you everyone for tuning in. I see the live chat going crazy right now. Absolutely throw a bear down in there. We got everyone uh, getting in, but Caleb Williams, sorry about that, but Caleb Williams is coming to House Hall this week. Super excited about it. If you're excited about it, hit that like button. Um, overall, I, I think it's good. I mean, like he's getting comfortable. The Bears have already met with Caleb Williams at a private dinner in LA before their draft, uh, their pro day. On top of that, they also met with him after. Ryan Poles, Matt Eberfus were talking to his parents. So, you know, overall, things are going in the right direction for this team in order to get the guy that they want for the future in Caleb Williams. He'll be on a rookie contract. Uh, he'll be, you know, cheaper than what we would expect, like a Justin Herbert, if we were to trade for him. But overall, he's the best prospect at a quarterback position that we've seen in a very long time. So excited to hear about his pro visit. That is coming up in the next couple of days. I've seen Wednesday. I've seen Tuesday. So it could be tomorrow. It could be uh, on Wednesday. Uh, before we get into more, what's up, everybody? We got some bears downs. What's going on, Rob? Sweet bear down. Bear down from Indiana. If you're calling in from somewhere that isn't Chicago or if Chicago, make sure you, you put a bear down in the comment section. <laughs> and, hey, I'll take that. I'll absolutely take that compliment. What's up, Santana? Nice to see you. F Green Bay, absolutely. Alton Turner, and yes, I couldn't agree more. But let's run up the likes. So, Caleb Williams was the first guy that the biggest name that's going to be coming on a top thirty visit to the House Hall later this week. Um, by the way, I think my chair is broken. That's not good. We'll have to get a new one. Um, but overall, excited to hear about that. And then we have Brock Powers, tight end from the University of Georgia, coming to Hallis Hall to meet with the Chicago Bears. Um, could be the Bears pick at number nine. I was kind of confused by this one because why would we go out and get Gerald Everett and then have Cole Komet to then go get Brock Bowers? And it's not like we signed Everett to a one-year contract either. We Overall, we have two very good tight ends. You know, maybe the Bears are just doing their homework like they've been doing with all these other pro days, but Brock Bowers is coming to the Chicago Bears later this week. Uh, for a top 30 visit, just a little bit about him, an 84.4 PFF grade, 6'4", 240 pounds this past year for Georgia, was an absolute monster, 10 games, uh, 717 receiving yards, 12.8 yard per catch average, and six receiving touchdowns for the Bulldogs. A good overall player. I, I don't see the Bears taking him at nine, to be honest with you, but the Bears are just doing their homework, bringing him in. I mean, they could change their mind. They could think he's a really great player to bring to this roster. We would definitely have the best tight end room in the NFL, but overall, I, I don't I don't see that happening moving forward and taking him at number nine. We have other areas of need besides tight end. The not, a key area of need, though, is center Zach Frazier from West Virginia, a projected second-round pick at the moment, early second-round pick. So this would be definitely if the Bears trade that number nine pick back in order to get more draft capital, this is where I see Zach Frazier coming into play, which 
I, I mean, I love everything about his profile. I mean, the dude's big, 6'3", 310 pounds up the middle would be fantastic for the Chicago Bears. And I want to hear your guys' thoughts, too, in the live chat. Make sure you throw your comments about these players up. I'll throw them up on the screen and see if we're thinking the same thing. But overall, a 74.5 PFF grade, the second-ranked center in this upcoming draft. And this past year for West Virginia, he played in 806 offensive snaps and only allowing three quarterback hits, zero sacks and four quarterback hurries, which is pretty darn impressive in zero penalties as well. So a reliable player that could come to the Chicago bears. I like Zach Frazier a lot. Honestly, he's my favorite center. Jackson powers. Johnson is a good athlete. I totally understand that. I think he will be a great center in the NFL, but there's no really possibility of the bears getting him at the moment. This is the one that I think is realistic. He'll have a chip on his shoulder because he's the second best center in the draft and he's got something to go out and prove for himself. But also coming to the Chicago Bears and solidifying the offensive line, he can make a legacy for himself and being like a next old and crude. So a really strong player, really strong pass blocker. That's what makes him really special. Um, run blocking, you know, obviously he's up there as well, but his pass blocking as a center is really good. He's also very smart. And that's what I'm excited for from his top, 30 visit with the Chicago bears. I want to know if polls is like asking the really difficult questions. You know, the coaches are in there talking to them saying like, what would you do in this situation? How would you handle that? You know, have you worked with this type of defender before? What type of offense are you thinking to really get to know these guys and make sure they are the right draft choice for the Chicago bears. So overall, Zach Frazier, great player. Let's go to the comment section real thick, real quick and see what you guys are thinking. Um, Zach is massive would be great for us. Yes, Santana. Absolutely. That's what makes this guy really special about Zach Frazier. He is a very big guy up the middle. That's the protection that we need. I mean, he can pick up double teams. He can handle nose tackles with ease. Uh, and you know, squeezy, I see you agreeing with me is a savage plays mean and nasty, uh, disposition. I agree with this. Like he'd be like a Tevin Jenkins at a center, which is awesome, which I'd be really excited about to bring in Zach Frazier guys, but he's one of the visits as well. So these guys are going to be overlapping each other too. The bears are going to fly them in. Like they're not all their own individual day. So these guys might see each other. They might be like, Oh, how was it? You know, kind of like going back and forth, like uh college, like, Oh, how'd the test go for you? Uh, it was all right. Like, look out for this question. So could be good to see uh, the Chicago Bears go out and get that. But I, we need a center. Zach Frazier is my personal pick at the moment for center for the Chicago Bears. So I want to hear what you guys are thinking, too. It seems like you guys always agree. And before we get into the next visit that we have coming up, tons of Bears down, guys. Thank you for always putting that in the live chat. You know, we got South Florida in the house. We got ATL in the house. We got Jacksonville. We got everyone. We got Charles in the house, Johnny G. What's going on, guys? Thanks for tuning into this episode. As always, I'm going to start doing live streams more often. So super excited to kind of be bringing this for you guys because honestly, live streams are my favorite thing because I get to talk to you guys live and we get to talk about what's going on. So let's go into now what is going on as well for the next player, which is Dylan Lobby, who is someone I haven't heard about before from the University of uh, New Hampshire. But running back Dylan Lobby, a pretty interesting guy. He had a great senior bowl, which is why I think he's on the Bears' radar at the moment. Um, he's a running back, projected fifth-round pick. So, you know, the Bears could use 122 on him. Uh, 5'10", 206 pounds, built like a tank. But he runs a 4.5440 time. Really if athletic uh, running back. His stats also show for it as well. He has an 81.6 PFF grade, which is definitely – enticing when it comes to bringing in a running back. We do have DeAndre Swift. We do have Khalil Herbert. We do have Rashawn Johnson. But what makes this guy special is that he is also plays like a receiver, which imagine a 5'10", 206-pound wide receiver running at you, built like a tank. Like I could see the Bears potentially moving him to the outside or doing play packages out of the backfield. But here are his stats. 10 games this past year, 161 rushing attempts, 745 yards, a 4.6 jar per carry average nine rushing touchdowns his receptions though 68 receptions for 708 yards so an over 10 yard per catch average so this guy is a dual threat which really impressive like i've never heard about this guy before last year he had over 1200 rushing yards for university of new hampshire but i i really like this potential pickup i, I think that he could be a really special running back in this league and i 
I would not mind it at all. I, I Dylan Lobby is for fifth round pick. If we do take a running back, also he does play special teams as well. So maybe Paul sees something in him there. You know, overall, I, Dylan Lobby really on a sleeper player. Like I, I, I like him a lot. I think that he could be a really good player to pick up for the Chicago Bears. His um, top thirty visit, I believe, is tomorrow on Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. We'll have all the news here for you guys. Let's go into the Chicago land kid that could be coming to the team. Karan uh, Ahmed G. I, if Ron's watching, he's going to torch me. I, I tried really hard on that name. But the Chicago land native from Hinsdale, Illinois, 6'5", 318 pound, played for Yale this past year in 89.5 PFF grade. I'll say that again. 89.5. Uh, this past year was a low year for him. He only played in four games due to injury, which hurt his draft stock quite a bit, unfortunately. But overall, I mean, still a really good player. His entire college career, he's only allowed one sack, and that was two years ago. So a strong player overall. Um, he's a strong, He's really known for his pass blocking from the offensive tackle position. He does dominate at left tackle. So this pick, on top of it, he is a projected at the moment set late second rounder. So again, if the Bears bring some more draft capital in, could he replace Black Braxton Jones as a starter? I don't know. Maybe. Um, but he is a strong player. His competition, obviously, playing at Yale isn't like top 100 talent all the time. But he's a strong player overall. And again, Ryan Poles loves bringing in Chicago kids. Like Likely, they're Bears fans. They grow up wanting to play for the Bears. They play a little harder. I mean, look at TJ Edwards, for example. Um, but overall, a really strong player. According to NFL Draft Buzz, too, his blocking rating is 91 from a pass blocking perspective and run blocking, 92. So I can see why he's a projected second rounder. The one thing that hurts him, even though he's only allowed one sack in his entire college career, on top of it, only five quarterback hits, none in the last two years. So it was all his freshman year. And in total, 20 quarterback hurries, but 15 of them were his freshman year. So he's made great improvement during his college career at Yale. The one thing about him is that he does get penalized a little bit, which that's a problem that I have with Braxton Jones. So it would kind of be like replacing like, Oh, like what are you doing here? The only way and hear me out. I want to hear your guys thoughts on it. Put it in the live chat is if we were to trade Nate Davis, chew up the money this year, but trade him for like a fourth or a fifth, maybe. And then we were to move Braxton Jones, the guard, and then bring in a rookie to play left tackle. I'm just throwing things out there, guys. Like we, we don't know what's going to happen with this team, but want to hear your guys thoughts in the live chat, but overall a strong player uh, out of Yale projected second rounder, great blocker overall. So could be he's scheduled for Thursday this week to meet with the bears. So exciting news to hear that the bears are still very much investing in their offensive line. Now, before we go into the next player, let's go into the live chat real quick. And if you haven't already, please hit that like button on this video. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. And I've got some news for you guys, so stay tuned for that. Let's go to the live chat real quick here. Um, let's go. All right. One sack. This guy is a beast. So, yes, couldn't agree more. He is absolutely a piece. Put a toothpick in your mouth. <laughs> what is, what's going on? Don't understand that one. Um does he have wingspan and athleticism? Athleticism. So again, right now, guys, for everyone tuning in, we are talking about a potential offensive tackle, Corinne Amengeji from Yale, a really talented player, projected second rounder. The question right now is what is his wingspan and what is his athleticism? So his RAS score at the moment, uh, let's pull that up for you guys, is RAS, RAS score at the moment, which will also give us his wingspan. So right now he has, should have had this up earlier. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not seeing anything crazy from, did they post his? They might not have posted because he went to Yale. Like smaller schools, they usually don't do it for, but let's see if we can find it for you guys real quick. But he looks really athletic. I mean, he's built really well. I mean, he carries 6'5", 318, no joke. So Strong player overall. Uh, his wingspan, though, it looks like he has 35 and a half inch arms. Wow. So he has really long arms, too. So he can cover a lot of space. He can cover a lot of his defenders. He's strong, strong footwork, too. Big kid. I mean, like, really big. It's, that's like crazy to be. I could never imagine being that tall, but. <laughs> 
good player overall. I, I, li- I like what he would potentially bring to the table for the Chicago Bears. I think that he could be a strong depth piece or maybe even a replacement. But yeah, trying to find that for you guys. I'm not finding it easily. So sorry about that, guys. But overall, let's see what else we got here for you. Um, he is big. Yes. <laughs> All right. Keep throwing your questions in the uh, live chat, guys. Also, FGB, if you haven't already put that in there. Um, Let's go over to also the announcement for you guys today. Sorry. So big announcement for you guys today. Uh, We are having our 2024 NFL draft party at Rizzo's Bar in in this upcoming April 25th. I am super excited to share that with you guys right now. If you haven't already, please scan that QR code on the screen right now in order to get your ticket information. But it's Thursday, April 25th. Doors open at 6 p.m. You will get a wristband when you walk in in order to show you are at the party. There is free, freshy organic tequila seltzer. There will be food deals. Uh, there might be even current players there. We're currently working on that for you guys, uh, but it will be a meet and greet. We'll be also be live streaming it if you're not able to make it. So make sure you stay on, stay tuned. We're going to start the live stream around 6.45 p.m. Central Time, and we're going to run it all the way through the Bears' first couple of picks. So we'd love to see you guys there at the draft party. Make sure you scan the QR code that's on the screen right now to get your ticket. Your ticket is a donation to a nonprofit. You can donate $1. You can donate $500. Anything is greatly appreciated, but that ticket gets you into the party, and we can't wait to see you guys there. Uh, Fun. So fun news for you guys. We have Deke's View coming. We have Swifty Sports coming. Uh, We have the the Bears News from Instagram coming, and we have Bill from Three Point Stand joining us for that live stream, and we'll have some other podcasters there as well. So we'd love to see you guys there. Please make sure that you scan that QR code on the screen or go to the link in the description. So I'm super excited about this party, guys. Been working on it for a long time for you guys, and hopefully I get to meet some of you finally. I know Santana's going. Super pumped about that. Um, And again, overall, it's for... It's for um, uh, charities, and we're excited to be there for a very historic night for the Chicago Bears. So let's go back to the live chat real quick and see what you guys are thinking. A lot of people are saying they want Joe Alt. I 100% want Joe Alt, but he is not going to be available at number nine, guys. That's why I did the trade back scenario today where we get Justin Herbert and trade back to number five with the Chargers and get Joe Alt. I mean, my big thing for you guys is that Justin Fields never had protection. Why are we not getting an elite left tackle? Braxton Jones is fine. He is a good player, but I want an elite left tackle to protect whoever my quarterback is, whether that's Caleb Williams or someone else. We would have to trade back though. So Caleb Williams wouldn't be the quarterback. We could maybe get a Drake May. We could maybe trade with the Chargers again, Justin Herbert. I said that in my last show. Like it it would be a great thing for the Chicago Bears. But overall, I would love Joe Alt, but he's not going to be there at nine. So just want to put that out there. Santana, we'll see you at the draft party. Absolutely. Um, yep, and Joe Alt will be gone. So overall, yeah, Joe Alt's not making it past the Titans. Julian, you said it best. So over the Bears are doing their homework on anyone that they can get. I mean, Caleb Williams is likely going to be the number one pick. But so Scott, quick question from Scott. What made you think of the Justin Herbert trade back today? If you look at Justin Herbert's contract, the Chargers are going to have to chew a ton of that debt, dead money. So the Bears won't have to pay Herbert as much money as they think. He's an established quarterback, only 26 years old. On top of that, I mean, like he's never had an offensive line. He's thrown 40 touchdown seasons, more than 4,000 passing yards. So overall, and then he's worked with Keenan Allen. He's worked with Gerald Everett. He's worked with Shane Waldron um, type offense with Sean McVay's offense. So overall, I mean, like I... Definitely could see the Bears somehow pulling this off. I think it's the the uh, the dark swan trade that no one's talking about that could happen. But I really like I really like the opportunity for the Chicago Bears to potentially go out and get Justin Herbert. That's what inspired me to make that video. Also, some of you guys were commenting it too. I did my research on it. And I think it would be super super lucky. Um, what about Olu Fushanu? Uh, I'm doing actually a video on him that will be posted tomorrow for you guys, kind of breaking down the Penn State left tackle, who also is friends with Caleb Williams. And we could get at number nine. So I would love it if the Bears did get take Caleb Williams at number nine and then got Olu Fushanu or Caleb Williams at number one and then Olu Fushanu at number nine. I think that'd be sick. That'd be, I mean, those guys played high school ball together. They played peewee ball together. They're good friends, good relationship there. And also Olu Fushanu has never let up a sack in his college career. 
So would be absolutely crazy. And thanks for everyone for tuning in. We just got a ton of people to join. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because the more people that like this video, the more YouTube puts it out to other people. So greatly appreciated from you guys uh, overall. And we're gonna we got some more players to go through today. Oh, okay. Thanks for the super chat, Alex. Um, you know, I do like him. I do. I think he's a good player. Is he worth number nine though? This would be another trade back situation. This would be if the bears end up trading back that number nine again, and they still want to go with an offensive tackle. Uh, but overall, I think, I think he'd be a good player as well. I mean, he's super athletic, but he doesn't have a top 30 visit yet. So right now we're just going to the players that do have a top 30 visit, but overall, um, I'll get back to that in a minute, John. I want to go over some of these more top 30 visits for everyone that's tuning in right now. Um, oh, what's going on with my computer? We'll find that out later. All right, so let's go into the other top 30 visits that the Chicago Bears are going to have. So another one that I am super duper pumped about, and I think you guys are too, and I want to hear in the comments right now, Jared Verse or Dallas Turner? It's, it's split down the middle, in my opinion. Like I did two videos back to back. Everyone's like either or either you're on Jared versus side or your Dallas Turner side. I want to hear who you guys want, but Dallas Turner is meeting with the Chicago bears later this week, which is super exciting. Obviously a projected top 10 pick would be great at number nine for the bears to pair with Montez sweat for the next four years. Uh, according to uh, PFF, he has an 81.6 overall grade. He played in 14 games this past year, 11 sacks, 11 quarterback hits, 33 quarterback hurries, one pass deflection, and 15 tackles for loss. I mean, this guy's a beast. I would love him to be paired with Montez Sweat for a super long time, and I think you guys would too. Really good overall athlete. I mean, stands at 6'4", 242 pounds. Built super well, 4.44, 40 times, so really quick, fast first step. Can tackle, can drop back into coverage. A lot of people don't know this too, but he has a 40-inch vertical. For a guy that big, I mean, pass deflections can drop back into coverage, batted balls, red zone, no one's going to get by him. So we could have like four linebackers technically just causing coverage. And then you have Montez Sweat and Javon Dexter Sr. just flush in the middle. I mean, that defense is going to be super scary this year. So let's go. Um, oh, we got, so I asked the question earlier, uh, Jared Verse or Dallas Turner. We got Verse, 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 Dallas Turner, Verse. I think doubt Ver oh, we got Latu in there. I'm gonna do a video on him later this week, so stay tuned for that, guys. Um <laughs> uh, I got some there's some comments over there. It, oh, we got another one. Thanks, Santana, for uh that. What would happen if the Bears did trade number one? I'm gonna get to that in a minute. So I can I can definitely answer that. But we got some more. Turner has an elite first step. Yup, Turner, Chop Robinson, another guy I'll be doing a video on over the next couple of weeks, guys. Just so you know, I'm gonna be doing prospect watch videos all the time for you guys. So, like, I appreciate your guys' support. They're it's so much fun to make because any of these guys could be the next Chicago Bear. Uh, but we got Dallas, Ver we got Jared Verse. I'd rather have Turner though, yes. Uh, Santana, I am getting to your comment in a minute. Verse 100%. Turner, Turner. Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. All right. Give that like button. Good content, Nikki boy. I got you, Johnny. Thanks for tuning in, man, as always. Are they bringing in Verse as well? His top 30 visit has not been confirmed, but I honestly, if I'm just going to be honest with you guys here, like either or is great. Either or is really good players. Johnny, yep, I love them both actually. So Santana, I'm going to go to your comment real quick. So Dallas Turner's top 30 visits this week. Super excited about it, guys. Can't wait. Santana, what would happen if the Bears did trade the number one overall pick? Well, it would shatter everybody because we got rid of Justin Fields and we're not going to get Caleb Williams then. So I think everyone would lose their freaking mind. And if you guys agree, <laughs> let's hear it in the live chat. Um, but overall, what what I think the Bears, it depends on how far back they go. I would I love the trade back of going to Washington and going to New England and getting a ton of draft capital. And then, you know, at number three, getting Marvin Harrison Jr., I would love that. I also would love if we did get a Joel All. I would love it if we did get, you know, a Malik Neighbors, if we, depending on where we traded back. Yeah. <laughs> the community would be in shambles. Julian, absolutely. And, you know, Austin, I think that's you. I would lose my mind, but in a good way. Yep, absolutely. So overall, I mean, Bears Universe would light on fire. There'd be a live stream right away. I would even do it from work, guys. Like, I would go to an office room and just, <laughs> just to chat with you guys right away. But um, 
I think the Bears, it's a historic haul. It would set the Bears up for a dynasty, in my opinion, and you can put that on my gravestone because how many teams can have another three years of second, of two first-round picks, multiple seconds, maybe even a other player? And this team's not far off, guys. This team has gotten better since last year. We doubled our over-doubled our wins last year, and we're already better than last year. So just putting that out there. So, you know, we have better coaching. We have better players, better offensive line. Overall, just... Everything's working for the Bears. I hope you guys agree with that, too. Um, we still got some more players to go through uh, really quick. <laughs> Blacksmith Rass, look, look, we can't have it all. Why not? Why not? Let's just keep it going. Um, I've, I've figured it out. Um, <laughs> uh, but let's go into the rest of the players, Santana. Thanks. Uh, and guys, keep throwing a bear down in there if you haven't already. Uh, and please, if you haven't already, hit that like button or subscribe if you haven't already. Let's grow the channel. Let's hit 15,000 before the draft. We're less than uh, 400 away, so really excited about it. Let's go into the other player that's coming in on a top 30 visit. Net Namia Pritchett. Yes, I looked up that one before. Um, a defensive back from the University of Auburn, a 71 overall PFF grade. Uh, this guy would be a huge depth piece for this team because he is a super good defensive back, a 58.8 QBR when targeted, one intercept, or I'm sorry, multiple interceptions, two interceptions for a total of 134. Wow. So he's run it back a few times. He does have a touchdown off a blocked punt return. He's a special team specialist as well. Uh, he's also blocked. 13 passes this past year for Auburn. So really good player projected fifth round pick. He stands at six foot, 190 pounds. So he's a smaller DB on the weight side. He definitely has that length, but nothing in NFL weight room and diet can't fix. Guy's a beast though. I mean, he runs a 4.36 40 time. I think him, Josh Blackwell, Jalen Jones, and Amen, the, all those special teamers would be insane for the Chicago Bears. So a really good player to bring in. He is confirmed to be coming. I, actually, I believe his... Uh, 30 visit was on Friday. So he has been in house hall talking with Ryan Poles and all those guys. Poles is going to be super busy guys. So if you guys see him in public, buy that man a coffee because he's going to be cooking and he's going to be, he's not going to be sleeping until after the draft, just like me. Um, so overall, a really good player to bring in super excited about it. Um, but yeah, not a bad player. Wow. The live chat just got busy. So I'm going to go over there real quick for you guys. Um, Yep, we got some bear downs, bear downs, absolutely. Antonio, what's up, man? Bear down, trade and select Amirius Mims. Ooh, okay, White Ghost. Let's check that out for you real quick. Amirius Mims. All right, so uh, from Georgia, strong player. Yes, absolutely. Offensive lineman. Yeah, he's a big dude. Holy cow, 6'7", 340. Uh, the one thing about him is that he doesn't fit that athletic small lineman that polls looks for. That's the one thing. I mean, I like him. I think he's a really good player. He definitely has an offensive efficiency rating of 168. Really solid player, but I don't I think he's I think I don't think he fits it. I don't think he fits it. But could be a strong player to bring in. Uh, I don't know where his projection is at the moment. I would have to look that up in a little bit. Um Another question from uh, Austin. Should we sign a punter in free agency? <sighs> this is tough. Gil just isn't doing it for me. I, I want to hear what you guys have to say about that too. Uh, you know, the punter from Iowa, uh, I think it's Trey Tory, uh, Tor uh, Tory Taylor from Iowa. I would really like him. I don't know where we would end up getting him though. I think he, I mean, like he's going to be a huge punter in this league, but yeah, I mean, there's no really punters to go after, but Gill just isn't doing the job that I thought he was going to do. He was ranked the worst punter in the league last year. So overall, it sucks. Um, but yeah, hopefully hopefully we see what happens. Antonio's got a question. Do you think it's a possibility that Ryan Pohl shocks the world and trains down the number one to pick up more draft capital? Yes. We were talking about this earlier. I think there is a possibility for that to end up happening. It's just such a weird situation. You can get a generational guy, but also hasn't proven anything on an NFL field yet. I mean, yes, he looks really good on paper, but overall, I don't know at the moment. I, You guys know I'm on the trade of training back. You know, there's too much opportunity to get, like you could trade back with the Chargers, get Justin Herbert, then you get Joe Alt, then you get Dallas Turner, you get other picks this year, like so on and so forth. Or you still trade back with Washington 
in New England, you get Marvin Harrison Jr., you get a bunch more picks, you still get a Dallas Turner, a Jared Verse type player at nine, you can trade back again. There's so many things that he could do. But also, like, Paul C is getting a little hot because he said it would take three years to rebuild this team into a contender. Well, it's year three now. And he got rid of his quarterback in Justin Fields. So overall, it could be kind of one of those situations where, eh, like, what do you do here? Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I would like – I'm team trade back. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, Swifties here. All right. Can I get your autograph at the draft party? Well, Swifty, um, if you come, which I know that you've been avoiding my messages about it, if you if you come, I, guys, we gotta get Swifty to come to the draft party. We need put it in the chat. Like, let's get everybody. To, we gotta get Swifty to make sure that he comes to the draft party, guys. We got Deke to fly in. So, just so you guys know, Deke is not from Chicago. Deke is flying in for the draft party. Swifty, I know that you can do it. Yes, but you can have my autograph at the draft party. But you have to come. That's part of the deal. So overall uh antonio i'm happy to see that you're on the um on the train as well in first swifty yeah, people are calling for you oh no what did i do <laughs> oh man here we go Sw yep here we go here we go swifty they got you they're looking at you right now did you recruit deandre swift swifty sports <laughs> I think he did. I think he did. We got to get him a jersey. Uh, but overall, guys, we'll stay here for a couple more minutes. I'm looking over at the, uh, the the live chat right now. But if you guys have any questions, make sure you throw them in. And also, if you haven't already, please hit that like button. I'm going to quickly go through again who will be visiting the Chicago Bears for top 30 visits. Uh, please also hit that subscribe button. And also, uh, please make sure that you get your ticket to our NFL draft party happening April 25th, 2024. Four. Doors open at 6 p.m. at Rizzo's Barden in Wrigleyville. Scan the QR code on your screen right now in order to get your ticket. Your ticket is a donation to a Chicago nonprofit that helps first-generation college students. You can donate $1. You can donate $500. Anything is greatly appreciated. And there will be free freshy food deals and more. We'll be live streaming from there as well. So if you can't make it to Chicago, no worries about it. We'll be live streaming except for you, Swifty. You have to come. Um, but overall, super excited. We're working on trying to get some current play players and former players as well. So it's going to be a heck of a party. It's going to be the best draft party in Chicago. So make sure you come and come out for that. Um, all right. All right. So let's go into the players that will be coming in one more time for the visit. So we have Caleb Williams coming in later this week, projected number one overall pick. Really excited to have him come to Chicago. He's already had a great conversation with Ryan Bowles, Flus, and all of those guys. So good to see that Caleb Williams will be coming to the Chicago Bears for a Hallis Hall visit later this week. Then we also have tight end Brack Bowers from Georgia, which I thought was a little interesting considering we have Komet and Everett. But again, the Bears are doing their homework. They would have to pick him at number nine. He's a projected top 10 pick, but we'll see. I, I don't know what the Bears are going to do right now. Let me hear your guys' thoughts too. My favorite one, though, besides Caleb Williams, is center Zach Frazier from West Virginia is coming into town. Very talented, big 6'3", 310-pound center, the number two center in the NFL draft at the moment. Great vision, could be the next Olin Krutz, just good, good, good grit. Really strong player. He's coming in this week as well. Then we have running back Dylan Lobby from University of New Hampshire, 5'10", 206 pounds, runs a 4.4140 time. Strong, fast player, also can play out of the backfield. He had more receiving yards as a running back than rushing yards, totaling over 1,500 yards from offensive line of scrimmage this past year and a projected fifth-round pick. Killed it at the Senior Bowl. Then we have offensive tackle Corinne. Ameg Ejeji from Yale, who is a Hinsdale native, so Chicago kid, projected second round pick, 6'5", 312 pounds, strong footwork, great pass blocking, good run blocking. He would definitely be a upgrade at left tackle over Braxton Jones at the moment on paper, but nothing is confirmed. They're just bringing him in for a visit. But, you know, they can move Jones to guard, trade Davis, do something like that. But super excited to see that this kid is coming in, and Ryan Poles loves his local Chicago natives. Then we have Edge Dallas Turner from Alabama, who will be in tomorrow, uh, looking at the schedule right now. So Dallas Turner, my favorite edge in the draft, if it wasn't for Jared Verse. Uh, but strong player, 6'4", 260-plus pounds, or yes, 260-plus pounds. Uh, projected top 10 pick, perfect pairing with Montez Sweat, super fast, 4.4440 time. Uh, 33 quarterback hurries this past year for Alabama. Uh, 10 quarterback sacks, 15 tackles for loss, just a good overall player for the Bears. And I think Ryan Poles likes him a lot. And defensive back, 
Nahima Pritchett from Auburn, defensive back, six foot, 190 pounds, 4.36, 40 time, one interception, a total of 103 return yards, uh, coming off a punt return for a touchdown. Not only that, 12 pass deflections, over 70 tackles, strong depth piece, but stronger uh, special teamer. So I could see why Poles is bringing him in. But overall, really good, really good stuff from Ryan Poles, guys. Top 30 visits are looking awesome. Super excited about it. Let's go to the live chat real quick. Uh, Swifty, I, I don't know if you're still there. I don't know if you're still there, but people are looking for you. We got we got some people right there. Any players on the visit list that really don't make any sense? I, I think Brock Bowers is the one that just doesn't make sense. We have two tight ends. He's a top 10 pick. We, have, we need to get an edge. We didn't get one, so yeah. Well, I think that's the only one that doesn't make sense to me at the moment. Did anyone sign Clawley? Apparently the New York Jets are, so... And also, I wouldn't want him. He's above 30 now. Like, he's just a journeyman. He just hops from team to team and just signs $10 million deals. But good for him. Uh, but that's about it, guys. Um, oh, O'O Alu and a first. Is this a, with a trade back? Because I would take, I would take, uh, Olu is for sure going to be at nine, in my opinion. But Joe Alt, like, yeah, uh, Joe Alt's going to be gone unless we trade back. So, all right, Swifty, you're still here. I see you. But overall, guys, excited about these top 30 visits. They're, oh, oh, just a would you rather. Uh, Joe All, obviously, but Olu Fushanu is going to be the guy that we end up bringing in. The value doesn't make sense for a tight end in the top 20. Yep, White Ghost, you couldn't have said it better. Couldn't have said it better. So overall. But guys, super fun live stream on a Monday for you guys. Top 30 visits are super excited. If you haven't already, please hit that like button to help get more Bears fans to see this video. On top of that, subscribe to the channel. And as always, if you please could, make sure that you go and get your ticket to our draft party. We got a uh, special guest coming. Would love to see you guys there. Uh, if you guys have any questions, make sure that to put it in the comment section. But with that, Thank you, as always, for tuning into this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde, and as always, bear down, baby.